Hi, I'm Kay of Kay's Creative Home. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'd like to share with you how I made this beautiful rose wreath that can be used for spring, for summer, or as a Mother's Day's gift. I'd also like to give you a sneak peek at the one I made in pink. Let's get started. So welcome back everyone. Today we're going to be making that beautiful yellow and cream rose wreath I showed you. And we're going to start with this um, garland that I got from Dollar Tree. It is a eucalyptus garland. And I'm going to start by just uh, arranging it around this wire frame, which also came from Dollar Tree. And this is a 14 inch wire frame. And it's going to take um, this entire garland and then a little piece I had from... Um, another garland that I had left over the same garland same type of garland, but I just had a piece left over So I'm going to go ahead and start wrapping this around by attaching it to the outer frame of the wreath and I'm going to be using zip ties to do this and I'm going to attach it at each crossbar so that it won't move so I'm just going to feed the zip tie in one side out on the other side of that crossbar and then I'm going to tighten it up. And I'm going to continue doing this on that outer ring at each crossbar all the way around the wreath. So now I'm about to connect where I first started and so I'm going to add another zip tie to just add that to the second inner ring just so I'm not trying to make it too clunky, you know, having two things attached at the very same place. And then I'm going to move to the third ring from the outer side of this form. So it's one, two, three in or from the inner circle, it's just one out. And I'm going to go all the way around again on that ring, again to attaching at the crossbars. So the first piece of garland I had ran out, so I'm starting with this extra piece I had left over from another wreath, and it is the same eucalyptus garland from Dollar Tree, and I'm just going to attach it again at the crossbars, and you can see kind of where, I guess it what would be about 11 o'clock, um, if you were looking at a clock, I've got a gap, and that gap I left there on purpose because that's where I'm going to be attaching my bow in the end. So that in, that will get filled in completely with the bow. So it's not as important to have uh, filler leaves or greenery in that area. Now that I've got the greenery attached to my wreath, I'm just going to work my way around clipping these um, zip tie ends so that I can toss them and get them out of the way. And I'm actually using a wire cutter tool that I use for making jewelry. Don't suggest that you do this because I have really dulled this blade, so I'll have to sharpen it again. But it just works with my hands so conveniently. So the next thing I'm going to do is add some foam to the bottom of my wreath or the back of my wreath. And I'm just doing that by putting some glue on the wire frame and just holding the foam in place. And I had a complete ring which I cut into pieces. And I do this so that when I'm sticking the flowers into the wreath, it has something to adhere to, um, to hold it in place so I don't have to use so many zip ties. So this is what I started with, a complete ring like you would have um, for florals. I sliced it in half like you would slice a um, bagel. 
And you'll see when I flip it over to the other side, it's kind of rough on that side because that's the raw edge where I cut it. And then I cut it into pieces because the ring was too small for my reform. So I'm going to just continue adding this all the way around, hot gluing it in, and then I'm going to secure it in. I'm not sure I recorded that, but I'm going to secure it in by using some um, tinsel ties or pipe cleaners, just wrapping from one side of the frame to the other to just kind of make sure the foam stays in place. Now with all of that in place, I'm going to flip the reform over and I'm going to start adding my flowers. So I'm going to begin with yellow and cream roses. And everywhere I put a yellow rose, I'm going to have some of that white floral to go with it. And that white floral came with my bunch of roses that I had. I guess it's supposed to be like a baby's breath. And then the cream roses, I'm going to use that green fern pieces that you see at the top of my screen. I'm going to use that with the white roses or cream roses so that the cream just doesn't get lost and it has some dark background to it. So what I'm going to do is put a little glue to the tips of the stems and just begin putting in the rose. Now some people can just eye things and put roses, put their florals in and it looks wonderful. I tend to like to do things in a um, patterns and patterns so I am going to start on that first ring between the first and second ring I think you can see it there I'm going to start adding my florals and I'm going to go all the way around the wreath first in that ring outer ring so I'm going to add a yellow wreath and then a few inches over like about five inches I'm going to add a white wreath so again the yellow wreath get the baby's breath with it the white wreath white wreath I'm sorry the white um, <laughs> start again the yellow rose <laughs> will get the white baby's breath with it and the white rose will get this green fern with it that I'm adding in and you'll see how once I put it behind it it just you know add that depth of color so that the white will pop and I keep saying white but it's actually like a cream so I'm gonna work my way around again um, I'm gonna go yellow white yellow white they're each going to be about four to five inches apart. I'm adding a little bit of glue to the stem so that it holds fast in that foam. And I'm adding the baby's breath or the fern to each piece so that, um, you know, it complements the rose and it also adds in some more filler to the wreath. Now, if you're enjoying the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and share it with others. And if you're not a part of the family, feel free to subscribe and ring the bell so you'll be notified when new videos are released. I want to apologize for being missing in action for a little while here. I've had a couple weeks where I've been doing some things to try to improve my YouTube channel and my overall business. So I've taken a, I'm currently taking a class for how to do things on YouTube so that I can bring you a better product. And I also took a class um, from Deco Exchange, and they did a class on how to make a website. Great class for a crazy low price. <laughs> I've never seen a class offered at that price. So if you're interested in that, you can check out Deco Exchange teaching website. I forgot the exact name. I will flash the name of that on the screen. And... Um, I'm sure they're going to offer the class again. It went well. Um, at the end of the class, you can have a completed website. Mine isn't completed because I got behind because I'm trying to do two classes, work, you know how it goes. So, um, yeah, I've been busy, but I'm going to do my best to stay on schedule from this point on. All right, so we're going to finish working our way around here, getting yellow, white, yellow white and I think I'm gonna get in two more yellow and whites and then we'll move on to the next thing
Now I shared I like doing things in patterns, so I'm starting to work on my inner circle. And you see right there, I've added a yellow rose on the left side of the screen to the inner part of the circle. And what I've done is in between the yellow and white rose on the outside of the circle, I try to put the yellow rose kind of in between there. And so for the inner circle, I'm going to use all yellow roses. And every time I get to a yellow and white rose in that order, I'm going to try to put a yellow rose kind of in between it, but on the inner circle. So I have the outer circle yellow white with a yellow rose between, and then I kind of skip a space because there's not enough space on that inner circle. So at the bottom here, you can see where I got that yellow and white again. I put a yellow in between, and now I'm going to go over to the right side of the screen is showing a yellow and a white rose, and I'm going to put one in between there on that inner circle. And like I said, I couldn't do it in between each one because it would just get too crowded on the inner circle. So because I'm only using two colors, sometimes, you know, the colors will run together. You'll see the same color um, side by side, but that can't be avoided when you're only using basically two colors. So I'm going to get this one in here, and then I think I add one more. I either add it now or I add it later, but I finally realized I needed one more in that inner circle. So got those on there. And I'm going to be ready to move on to the next step. So now that I have some flowers on the outer ring and the inner ring of my circle, I want some right in the center. So I chose this white rose to start with and kind of in, the be in between where I have the other flowers, I'm going to put a white rose right in the center. And once I get this in, you'll be able to see there's like a two of them behind it and two of it in front of it, two roses in front of it, two roses behind it, and it's kind of right in the center. Hopefully you can see that. And again, it's just because I like patterns. <laughs> so, and I'm also making sure I'm trying to fill in my empty spaces with something large. So once I got that in there, I decided I needed to go back to the yellow flowers and put their filler in so I could see how much filler I needed behind these white roses I was adding. So I got my white little baby's breath and I'll go back to each yellow rose on that inner circle and just add some baby's breath step by step here just to see how much fill I'm gonna need for the center. So I'm gonna add those, I have three yellow roses, I'm gonna add those pieces in and then I'll come back and work on those center flowers. Again, if you're enjoying the video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and share with others. And if you're not a family member, please consider subscribing and ringing the bell so you'll be notified when new videos are released. I have completed this yellow rose wreath. And again, I'm giving you a sneak peek at the end of one I did with pink roses. I want to do another one with red roses. They'll all be on my Etsy shop. Um, in plenty of time for Mother's Day and then um, I'm going to move on to some more summer wreaths. Um, got some patriotic wreaths coming up and I'm really getting excited about some of the other florals I've been able to find to make some more wreaths for the summer. So I look forward to sharing those with you too. All right I got the filler on my yellow flowers. Now I'm back to the center and I'm going to, again, you can see that large gap and where I laid it, the white rose is going to fill right in that space. So I got that in, add a little bit of glue so it doesn't come back out. And now I'm going to add one more white rose into the center, again, where I have a big gap in between the outer and inner roses. That one's going to fall right there, and you can kind of see how, where it is, there was a big space. <laughs> so I'm going to get that in, get its greenery filled in with all of those white roses, and then we'll be moving on to the next step. 
So once I've added all of my all of my large florals to my wreath, at this point I like to hang it up so that I can see from different angles what's needed. So um, I'm going to start adding in some smaller flowers um, and they'll be used as fillers again for all those gaps you see, for the green foam you see showing through at different spaces. And then I have areas where it's just a whole bunch of green and I want a pop of color in those areas. So what I have are these yellow forsythias I've cut up into pieces. And here I am adding one here that's going to fill in a nice big um, gap. And I also have little white daisies. And I'm going to be using those. There's one right here. I think this is a daisy. <laughs> um, I'm going to be using those to, as filler too. And they go with the colors I already have in my wreath. Again, I'm calling them white. They're like an off-white. And they blend in very well with those cream roses. So I'm just going to add this and that here and there. Some for Cynthia and daisies. And then some, some areas might even need some greenery as filler. And I'm going to be putting that in in a few different places. And then we'll move on to the next step. So here you can see at the bottom I've added a beautiful spring bow and if you'd like to see how I make my bows there is a link in the description box below for a playlist for how to make a bow and I share multiple videos on different types of bow, bows using different types of materials. So you can find almost any kind of bow there and if there's something you'd like to see me make that's not included just let me know. Leave me a comment and say, okay, I want to know how to make a such and such bow. And I will try to record a video to add that to the playlist. All right, I'm going to fluff and shape this bow a little bit. And then we're going to move on to the next step. So I decided I wanted to take some of the florals from the wreath and bring them right into the bow. So I'm going to do that now. Please excuse the angle. It's not quite right. I'm going to switch the camera a little later so that you can see a little bit better. I um, recently moved all of my wreath making materials into a sitting room I had. It is not working out. <laughs> I thought it would work, but it's not working out, um, especially trying to get really good camera angles. So we're expecting cicadas in a few weeks, and while the cicadas are outside playing, I'm going to be inside trying to move all of my reef um, materials and things to another room. I'm going to give it one more try, trying to find a better area for storage and for filming my reef tutorials. So I'm going to be doing that soon. So in the meantime, bear with me. But I've just added some of that for Cynthia and those yellow, I mean yellow daisies, and the white daisies here into the center of my bow. I was using the tip of a branch so I wouldn't burn my fingers because I'm hot gluing those in. And once we get that done, I'll be able to share the wreath with you. 
Now don't forget to hang on until the end of the video so you can also see pictures of the pink and cream rose wreath I made. Okay? I want to thank you for spending this time with me and I'll be talking with you again real soon.